Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash regular revenge. In today's episode, I got revenge on my mother's previous employer. On the last day of my fifth grade, a kid that I had never even spoken to before, punched me in the back so hard it knocked the wind out of me. Got my manager and district manger demoted. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. I got revenge on my mother's previous employer. So last year during pandemic my mother was working in a private school, the staff was very friendly and cheerful in the school, but the thing that s asterisk cared about the school was that the owner of the school was pretty big businessman, and he never gave an appointment letter to any employees, and he used this thing to his advantage last year by reducing the salaries of all the employees that joined the school last year by 80%. My mother was in this group, and since there was no written proof of their original salary, all the employees had to accept this BS, and since my family had a debt, and we really needed the money the year was going rough for us, every employee who raised their voice were immediately fired and whoever tried to take matter to court were dumbstruck because according to school they never worked there. I was quite furious with this because my mother had to do a lot of work for a very less pay, and also I was a student in that same school a couple years ago, and a lot of BS was done to me too by the school management. The revenge I was learning to do graphic designing, and I started doing freelance work on Upwork, and soon I landed a pretty good project that paid me a good money with which my family's debt was reduced by almost 50%, and then at the start of the second term of the school which was a pretty busy time for the school, I told my mother to give in her resignation since there was no appointment letter or agreement. Any employee could also quit at any point of time without giving a notice. My mother had to plan work and activities for four classes, and since all the teachers of these four classes were dumb they couldn't do anything on time and the school was started for the second term without any syllabus or activities for these four classes, it was complete chaos. The principal blew up my mother's phone with messages telling her to come back to work, and this was very unprofessional after a few months I got to know from a friend of mine who was still studying in that school that since my mother was the most experienced and creative person in that field no one even close to my mother's experience could be found and because of pandemic there weren't a lot of good candidates out there for the job. The school had to temporarily close the pre-primary section of school and because of this there was a big as line of entitled Karen parents outside the principal's office. My mother got a job in another school, and these guys pay a decent salary, and there is very less workload. On the last day of my fifth grade, a kid that I had never even spoken to before, punched me in the back so hard it knocked the wind out of me. I moved to Minnesota when I was 10. I was a child-sized child. If you've never been to Minnesota, their state average height is 6. This includes their children. Anyway, last day of fifth grade, everyone's in the hall. It's morning and I'm on my way to class when something hits me in the back so hard I literally fall on my face and start gasping for air. I manage to look behind me and see this 12-year-old ginger farm kid with the actual stature of a Viking standing over me. Like, really six feet tall. One of his friends is laughing while he stands there smirking at me, gasping. I realize he punched me. I'm so confused and still can't f asterisk king breathe. I've never spoken to this kid in my life. Literally never did anything bad to anyone. Anyway, I was late to class as I finally caught my breath. He just walked away. He was just gone after having wrecked me for no reason. It was all I could think about all day. The morning dragged on and it was literally torturing me. I had no concept of it being the last day of school just the first day I had ever been punched by a stranger for no reason. In the back of all things. Well, by the time lunch came, I was almost myself again. Hit recess and got some almost summer air on my face. Whole playground was alive with kids being extra crazy. Then I saw him. Facing away from me, about 20 feet away. His two friends were facing away from me too. No one knew I existed in this one moment. I ran. I ran so fast. Right at him. Just as I got to him I jumped and put my shoulder into it. I shoulder checked this giant so hard he flew away from me. 
His face hit the asphalt. I could hear him crying as I ran to a different part of the playground, not even looking behind me. I knew I was gonna get in trouble. I waited for it. No one ever came to talk to me. Literally nothing ever happened. I finished my last day of fifth grade and never saw the giant sixth grader again. I don't think this was necessarily a good or right thing. Just a thing that happened. Got my manager and district manger demoted. I was reading this story on her slash malicious compliance, and it reminded me of one of my own migraine stories. I've had migraines since I was 13 now 41. I used to work for one of the big four credit card companies ages ago, been at my current job for almost 15 years. At the time of this story, I had worked for the company for about a year, and due to the 2001 events that hit the economy in order to keep my job I had switched departments. They had done a reorg of the department I moved to and I had recently been moved onto this manager's team. She had several issues with me that included. My eyes can change color based on how I feel. My eyes may not always be the same color. I am a 42H and she was barely an A. I qualified for FMLA, she had been declined due to repeated fraud. I ended up handling all TTY calls and relay calls for the center due to previous training and they didn't have to train someone else on the TTY machine. So both number one and number two on my list freaked her out. She didn't like that she could leave my desk, come back an hour later, and I might have had blue eyes, but now they were gray or green or multicolored. I actually got colored contacts to help with this, but I stopped giving a hot after I discovered more about her attitude and would wear multiple colors on purpose or clear because her comfort no longer was my concern. Now on to number three. I have been at least a DDD since middle school and at the time was a 38F. Anyone who has a large chest knows there is no hiding cleavage and that you deal with it as best you can. I'm not getting into bra sizes massively, but the brand I wear uses cup sizes of barely A A, barely B C D D D D D D D D D D E F G H I etc. Sizing in cups. I think if I was to try to use the equivalent of V S sizing, I'd be a J or K if they carried them. I am not someone who flaunts it, but I also don't hide it either. I am modest and never go to work in a shirt that is inappropriate. I know she told me that flaunting my boobs was inappropriate and that I must have gotten enhancement as there was no way they were real, they were slash r. I suspect she was jealous, but this is 100% speculation as I never heard her say anything about it. I do know that there were many rumors around that department that she was not eligible for breast enhancement surgery. If I didn't wear a turtleneck this manager would try to write me up for being out of the dress code. The DM was manager's best friend and signed off on all write-ups. I would refuse to sign these and turn around and go to HR asking if my outfit was inappropriate, and when they said no, I would hand them the write-up and go back to work. Skipping 4 and 5 for a minute. Number 6 was the funniest reason for me. Anyone who has handled TTY or relay calls knows there are specific phrases you use to identify to the other party that you are finished and they are able to resume their discussion. GA, go ahead, slash SK, stop keyboard, you also try to condense messages to be shorter and more concise when possible but don't treat it like text messaging with several short messages in quick succession. The other part was ensuring that we validated the client and shared information accordingly. The manager got upset that she couldn't let her pets do TTY as when she had tried previously the company had gotten complaints, they either didn't verify or wouldn't give them information in relay calls as they felt the client should be talking and not an intermediary, so company policy was that unless they were trained on the TTY slash relay line they couldn't handle the calls. The company required 20 hours of training and tests to ensure that it was handled properly. Not having to train someone in TTY protocol was a bonus for the department as I had been trained in my previous department. Number 4 and number 5 occurred when I would call in with a migraine. I had FMLA so there was no way she could decline the time off as long as I was within my requirements which I always was, and my absence couldn't affect team stats due to company policy. As mentioned the manager had been declined FLMA as she had her brother, who was a doctor try to write up migraine FMLA for her, 
but he wrote up missing up to 18 days a month for mild migraines. In order for the company to accept her diagnosis due to the excessive absences allowed by the PCP, they made her go to other doctors who wouldn't diagnose her with migraines. This is something a company could do if they paid for the additional doctors. I do know the details on this for certain as she had brought it up several times and was the reason I had to go through additional diagnoses including two CAT scans and three MRIs to verify the diagnosis for my migraines. Before you ask, yes, I also had to be diagnosed by other doctors, two in my case, and all doctors agreed I have severe migraines and that three to four absences of no more than three days per absence each month were warranted. Also, I hope no one ever has to do a CAT scan or MRI with a migraine. It's torture. Here is where I have to say I don't know if this last part is still the case as my current job hasn't made me certify for FMLA and has been amazing to work with so I've not really kept up in FMLA laws and changes since getting this job. I do glance every couple of years, however, I am not as up on the laws as I probably should be. My treatments included a controlled substance, so I legally couldn't drive when I took this medication as it would be a DUI if I got in an accident or got pulled over after taking it. One day I called in and she started yelling at me about how I was ruining the team stats by being out so much. I told her that I couldn't legally drive and I wasn't coming in. She told me if I didn't come into work in the next 30 minutes I would be written up for insubordination. I told her well if I hit a kid on the way and what am I supposed to tell the cops? That my boss told me I had to break the law? Before you ask I didn't go to work. I wasn't about to put myself or anyone else in danger. I did get written up the next day for insubordination, and that also went to HR. My husband who also worked for the company had recorded the conversation as I had put it on speaker, and he provided this recording to HR for me. Things like this continued daily for almost six months at which point the stress caused Maine to lose my voice. I saw ENT specialists who couldn't find any reason for the voice loss apart from the stress. I was able to do the TTY calls so hadn't been out but hadn't been able to do any phone calls. I had also been continuing to get daily write-ups for not taking calls that I physically couldn't take. The voice loss has actually been a continuing issue since that when under heavy stress, I will lose my voice for several days. After five weeks of voicelessness, HR called me into their office. The FMLA call-in above was close to when I lost my voice, maybe two to three weeks before, but the best example of her abuse of power as a manager and what prompted the investigation as it had been recorded. There was a huge paper trail due to all the write-ups I had provided and signed to HR. The DM had signed off on every write-up by this manager even when she hadn't reported to the DM so that is why they included the DM. HR had called me in to let me know I had an interview with another department as that was the only way they could get me out of the department and all I had to do was show up to get the job. They felt that I was in a position where my health and the company were at risk of me suing them if I remained in my current position. I transferred departments and about a week afterward my voice started to come back. I ended up leaving this company about two years later due to the fact that due to repeated FMLA fraud in the company I ended up having to recertify my leave two to three times a month, basically any time I took any leave. FMLA leave is good for up to six months and employers can only request recertification if leave is extended beyond what is in the initial certification. Mine was always written up for the six-month maximum. I was brought in for a follow-up several months after changing departments a second time and told the results of the investigation. Both the manager and district manager in the previous department had been found at fault for harassment and inappropriate write-ups especially in regards to FMLA leave. They had been demoted to phone reps in that department. I found out from a friend in the old department that both quit shortly after and they complained openly about the pay decrease they got with demotion.